Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how to build the Pentablade, which will give you five variants from one Baneblade kit. Here we go, here's the Astra Militarum Baneblade, an awesome model, and I'll be doing an unboxing video if you want to check that up on the channel, having a close look at the sprues and the components of the box. But in this video, we're going to concentrate on building the Baneblade kit so that you can get five variants and play it as different vehicle options in the game. There's lots of great videos on how to build an Octoblade so you can get all eight variants from one kit. But for me, it was a little bit tricky, lots of magnetization and a lot of fiddling around. But I saw this version on Boho Jack's stream on Reddit. And I thought this looks great. Having five variants is awesome and it looked nice and easy to put together. So thanks to Boho Jack for this brilliant idea. Let's get started. And the first thing I did is laid out all the pieces, trimmed them from the sprues and then just tidied them up. And I like to use this big foam sheet. It's quite soft and it holds all the pieces in place, stops them bouncing around. And there's a lot of friction there. So it keeps everything nice and safe so you don't lose any parts. Here's the Bane Blade instruction book, and it's a real chunky book, lots going on here. And this double page shows you the eight variants. Now we're going to build the first five Bane Blade and Hellhammer, Storm Sword, Shadow Sword, and Bane Sword. And this will give you a good excuse to pick up another set for that Doom Hammer, Bane Hammer, and Storm Lord. And so we're going to go through and we're going to build the first few stages of the book. We're going to work through building all the track pieces and then assembling them together into the pretty much the base of the tank. But we are going to stop when we get to 3B and we're not going to glue this piece in here. So when you get to that stage, just ignore that bit and continue until you get to 3D and then glue that back piece in. For each stage of the build, I just got all the pieces I needed on my board. And then I went through, made sure it's all nice and tidy, got rid of all those lines and any little marks that were left from the sprue. And I like to use just a little sharp blade, just scrape away, trimming the little pieces left from the sprue and then running the side of my blade along it just to scrape it down. So it's nice and smooth and even and then just continue doing that on all the pieces, getting them ready to glue. So I do this in one stage and then I move on to gluing and I can highly recommend the Tamiya cement. Brilliant, makes it nice and easy to applicate it. That brush is fantastic and you get lots of control and speed from this brush. For the rest of the video, I'll just take you through each stage. I won't go through building and assembling every single part, but this process of trimming and then getting each stage ready before gluing is how I go through the whole project. And so now I've gone through the first section building this one side of the tank. So here's what one side will look like when it's complete. And so, yeah, real nice chunky pieces, this and just getting them all trimmed in one go really speeds up the process. So I do that with the opposite side of the tank and then I move on to this section, remembering not to glue that piece in. That's really important. And now we're up to step 3D in the book. And so this is going to be the main section of the tank built now and all glued together except for that front piece. And now we're going to need to build the two top bits for the different variants. So one section is going to give us the Bane Blade and the Hellhammer, and the other section will give us the Storm Sword, Shadow Sword, and Bane Sword, because you're mostly just swep uh, swapping over the weapons. I haven't glued these bits in yet because I may need to do some magnetization later on. So at this stage, I didn't glue those big panels on the top. At this stage, you can do a little dry fit, and that piece there I've just trimmed off a little bit, which I'll show you later on on a similar piece. And then this is one section that comes in the kit. And so you can see that's pretty much it. We'll glue those together and we're good to go. So we're going to move on now, go past step 3D and we're going to start putting all these together. So we have already glued that back piece on. Now it's time to do the top part of the tank for the Bane Blade and the Hellhammer and start putting together the turrets. So exactly the same as before, I get all the pieces I need lined up on my cutting board, trim them all up and then glue them all again. So one stage of trimming, one stage of gluing. And that takes us to this stage here. So we've got quite far now into the book. We're on stage 6A and you can see I've put those pieces inside. I've glued this flat panel on and already now that's going to give the structure we need to pop it in. And you just slide it in and that's it. You don't need to glue anything else or use any magnets for it. And then for the turret, I haven't glued that on 
because we're going to need to put tank commanders and hatches on and have some options later on so i'm going to do that and you just line up these little clips underneath put them in the slots and then that'll still turn so you don't glue that bit in and then we've got two weapon for those two bane blade options and so they're going to be magnetized later on in the video so i'll get it all glued first and then we'll do the magnetizing at the end but you can see where that's going to line up on the turret there and here's a close-up just to show you how those shapes fit together nicely now from 6b through to 6d it's just a case of putting all the parts on as shown in the book so i'm going to go ahead and do that now and there we go now we're starting to look a lot more detail we've got those extra weapons on the spotlight the aerials we've got the exhausts on the back and it's really starting to look cool now you could add magnets, extra sprues to support if you wanted to, but I find this is pretty robust. You can see it's really easy to take out and then sliding it back in, as long as it goes over those two parts in the front, that's in, that's not going anywhere. You can shake it around, it doesn't rattle, and yeah, really solid. Now it's time to move on and start to build the sponsons and look at where we can put the panels. And I'll be doing a lot of magnetizing to these sections later on in the video. And so that's where the main magnets are going to take place. And we've got the options for the tank commanders as well. So here we've got the side panels that are going to go on to the sections that don't have sponsons. So you're allowed up to four sponsons on this tank. So they've got these little squares or rectangles that go in the rectangular slot there. And so you can pop those in. You can glue them in place if you want to. But for me, I want to have the option to take my sponsons on or off on some of them, not all of them. And then on these little panels, I'll have to magnetize those as well. So I can swap the panels for the different sponsons and the turret that comes on the top. And then you can move them forward, back or however you like. I haven't decided on my tank commanders yet and so I will be magnetizing these sections later on and that won't be included in this video but you can see you get one with a base and then you get the other ones you get three all together that you can put inside the turret so if you want to do that that's an option and after building the bane blade there's also these little parts left over on the sprue so you've got some different ammunition there to put together some little additions to put on and then you've got a little toolbox which is pretty cool actually and then you've got some flamers as well which are an option for your sponson so that's taken care of the bane blade and the hellhammer so now we can move on to the next three which are the storm sword shadow sword and bane sword We've built the bottom section, but we don't want to glue that piece on in 15C. We want to keep that out, and I'll show you that as we put it together. And then we're going to work through putting together the canopy here so that we've got all the three options for the tank. And a lot of this with the exhausts are also done, and the sponsons as well. So we've done a lot of these steps already. So let's get looking at how we can build this top part of the tank for these variations. One thing to point out though is if you do build that first bane sword variant you're going to use the exhaust so you don't need those again but you will need some more of these aerials now i picked up the additional accessory and sprue pack for the bane blade so that i could have all these other features to use so i'm glad i did because it also gives you this sprue which includes another sponson so if you want to have four sponsons you will need to buy this accessory pack to build the other two so now we're back to this stage we've got the base ready built all the little bits put on there the ladder the smoke launchers that kind of thing but now we need to build the top part so again i get all my pieces out get them all on the board trim them up and get them ready to glue and this is the piece where these little slots here will or little extended pieces will go into the slots in the side of the tank there so what we need to do is just get rid of those and so we'll trim them off and this is what i did to that other piece for the bane blade so just snip them off try and get a nice straight line there and then I'll just use my knife again to trim and scrape that down so it's nice and smooth and then that's going to help this top piece to slide nicely in and out of the bottom section. And here you can see just dry fitting it that it's going to go in there so there we go just pop it in that rests in nice and secure it's not quite as sturdy as the first piece but once it's glued on to the next section it will certainly be strong enough so you have to put this flat bit here and then the main chunk of the turret well it's not really a turret because it doesn't move but the top part would go on like that so now i've glued those three pieces together and followed all the other steps to put all the weapons on but i haven't glued this section in here 
So from step 17 and 18, I haven't glued that because that can just be held in with friction to give us the shadow sword or bane sword. If we want to use the storm sword, just have to figure out a way of putting this little piece on. And so I've come up with an idea that doesn't use magnets, but is nice and easy to do that. So we've got the main section here glued together, but what I didn't do was glue this bit in. So there's two loose parts for these three variants. So that's the stage you need to get to, and that'll give you three variants. And then you can just swap them over, nice and easy. You can pop that piece back in, and then that's your Bane Blade or Hellhammer, or put the others in, and you've got the Storm Sword, Shadow Sword, and Bane Sword. So this is nice and easy. You've used no magnets yet, and you can swap over the two top parts of the tanks really quickly and easily. I have to put the back piece in first, as you see here. So back bit goes in, locks in place, and then that's really sturdy again. That's not going anywhere. You can really shake it around. And so, yeah, really good, really quick way. Bit of friction, that's gonna get that weapon option in. And now we just have to move on and start doing the magnets. For the magnets, you'll need some different size magnets, and I'll go through that as we do it. And then all the parts that you want to magnetize and some super glue. I don't like using magnets or super glue, so this stage for me, I was happy to get it complete, but it's worth doing. Even if you don't enjoy it, it's worth having the weapon options when you play the game for sure. So I'll be using some 6mm by 2mm magnets here. I'll put links down below in the description that'll take you to Amazon. And then I'm going to grab the drill and we'll start getting into this. And here I've got a 6mm drill bit, I make a hole right in the centre, then that's going to go in nicely. This is a wooden drill bit because it's got that pointy bit at the front so it can line up nicely. I've got it on the lower setting and I'm just taking my time drilling that hole into the barrel. And there we go, we go right through with that and then that's going to make a nice size hole for the 6mm magnet to fit in perfectly. So I'll take a little bit of super glue, pop that in push the magnet in and that's going to fix it really tightly and so the super glue good it's good to get a good brand uh, like the gel one if you can get it it's better but I find that this Loctite super glue is really good push the magnet in and then make sure it's well in place and let it hold it there until you pull the other magnets off and so there we go now we'll move on to the other one and for this turret I'm going to cut a little bit piece of plastic from a sprue into a size that will fit just inside the turret. So I'm just trimming that off because that's the part we're going to glue the magnet onto. And then I cut away with my snippers all around this plastic to make a little circle that we can fit inside. And so you can see it fits nicely and then we'll just push it in to where we want it to go. And I'm just going to be gentle here and then we'll use some of the normal plastic glue cement for this. And if you see in there, there's a little line which tells you where to line up your magnet on top of it. With our magnets in the barrels, we need to make sure the turret side is magnetized as well. So what I do is I'm going to leave this little notch at the top because that's going to help line things up. I'm just going to run my knife right through that section there and then I'm going to get my snippers and cut the round piece out. So we'll leave that little peg at the top, but the round bit will be completely gone as you can see here. So that's ready now to glue on. You could put a bit more plastic to fill the hole, but it really doesn't need it. To make sure the magnets line up, I stick some back on to the magnet in the barrel and then I trim them off so I know I've got one magnet that I want glued to my turret. Put some super glue on that, being careful not to spill into the edges. And then using that little peg, we can line it up and then push it against the turret and then that's going to give us a nice bond and make sure it lines up perfectly. And then once that glue's gone off and set completely, you can remove it and then put it on and off as you like. And so, yeah, these magnets are super strong as well. It's really important to make sure that both barrels are lined up with the magnets so they both can fit to the turret. And so what I've done is I've done it this way. I did one first and then went to the other. And so I put the magnet on the turret and then glued it into the barrel. And that makes sure that both of them will be the same. And this one is a real snug fit. Now let's do the storm sword variant. And for this, I didn't use any magnets and you can see it's on nice and tight there. And what I've done is I've got some sprues and I glued two pieces together, keeping those round bits on there, tapered it slightly so that it can get pushed in. And then the chunkier part locks in place and that gives us a real strong fix to hold the storm sword part of the weapon. So once you push the sprue into the turret, you can then get the weapon barrel there and then line that up and push it in and then make sure it's lined up the right way because it's not a square in there, it's a rectangle. And then once you line it up, that's nice and solid. Now on to the Shadow Sword and Bane Sword. And this just goes right in with some friction and that holds in place. 
You could magnetize it if you want to, but popping that bit off and on swaps between the two weapon options, and that is nice and snug when it's in. I haven't decided what to do with this yet, so I'm going to leave this bit out of the video, but there will be an update coming later where I magnetize the turret part and then have different options for the tank commanders and tank riders and things like that. So I've left this bit unglued for now because I want to go back to it. But I did glue the sponson, so let's have a look at this. And with that extra kit, the accessory pack, I've built two more and I've chose to put flamers on these. So I've always got the storm bottles glued on, but then flamers here. So I've trimmed off that little rectangular piece and then I'm going to look at these little panels. So I want those to go on what I'm not using for sponsons. So they need to be magnetized too. So I'm going to trim off those rectangles and make sure that's nice and flat and then put some glue on this together and then also figure out a way where the magnets go in those holes and to do that I grabbed that drill bit and drilled right into it and so I've got to say this is a bit uh, felt a bit weird just drilling into my tank but this is the only way really I thought I could get it done and get a nice six mil magnet in the side you're never going to see it so it doesn't matter what it looks like at this stage so with some glue I popped the magnet in let it set and for good measure added some more glue all around using the super glue again here and then I want to line up these now so I'm going to just drill some tiny holes and put some two mil magnets in there so here I've got a two mil drill bit and I'm just going to use my hand I'm not using the electric drill for this stage and I'm just being really careful not to go all the way through and you can see I'm just starting to there but there's no hole and then that magnet will fit perfectly and it's nice and flush so with a little bit of glue just pop that in the hole and then push the magnet in and then slide it off so that it stays in place and there you go. And so once that's set, I did it twice, there's two magnets all together and that's gonna get a nice strong fit on the side. Now I need to do something with this sponson to fix it. And this is why I've used the big six mil magnet because this is quite heavy, so it needs a good strong magnet to keep it in place. And so in here is a little circle. I think you can just see it there. And that lines up where we want our magnet to go. And so I use a little bit of sprue cut into a T shape, and then I'm gonna glue a magnet onto that and make sure then that that's flush with the other sections of the sponson. So as I turn it, I want it nice and flat, nice and flush. And I use a wooden stick just to make sure that was the case. And then once that magnet's glued and set, that's ready to go. And that'll just stay on now, nice and strong, nice and sturdy, and we're good to go. And that's as far as I've got now. So we're all glued. We've got the magnets where we need to be, except for those hatches where we'll swap them over later on. And I've got to say, I'm really happy with this. The gluing with super glue and magnets is not easy, not fun. It can be quite messy and a bit frustrating at times. But I think for the le the amount we've had to do for this model, it's really worth it. Having the choice to swap the tops without any magnets or without any extra work is really nice and easy. And in here, I've added a few extra magnets just to keep all the weapons in place. So you can see I just simply glued some magnets to the end and to the base and that's going to hold all these different weapons. So it's a nice little storage area to keep everything safe and together in one place. So that's just an optional step that I did. I just thought it'd be fun to keep everything nice and secured inside. And it doesn't rattle around when you move the tank either. So that's really good. And so, yeah, just got to add magnets to these at a later stage. And then for the sponsons, that rear one with the bolters is in place, but I can swap this panel with the flamers at the front and then they can change whenever I want to add four or just go with two. So it's nice to have that option. And then if I want to build the storm sword, shadow sword or bane sword, I grab this back piece, pop it in place, pull out the turret for the weapon I need, and then I can attach that just with friction or with that piece of sprue that I put together. That's going to go in slide it in place and then we've got our three variants on top of the Bane Blade and Hellhammer, taking us to a total of five variants and completion of our Penta Blade. I hope you found this helpful and it gave you a good idea of how you might like to put together your Bane Blade into some different variants without having to do too much magnetization and also making it quite easy to swap from one to the other. I really had fun building the kit, not so much the super glue and magnets, but the rest was great fun to build. I'm really happy to have this beast of a tank in the new Astra Militarum army. And this is gonna be taking up, what, 500 points of my 6,000 point army. So it's gonna be a big centerpiece and a huge just rolling fortress on tracks full of weapons, full of turrets, 
bolters, flamers, all sorts coming out of it. Laz cannons, auto cannons, heavy stubber, and of course those main barreled weapons that can be kept inside until you're ready to use them. So this was a nice touch, I think, to finish the model, just to put those magnets in there to hold everything in place so you can have everything in one tank and swap it over to the other three variants if you wanted to. But all up, a real chunky vehicle and a great addition to any army. I'm posting a series of behind the scenes videos as part of a diary to document the full progress of my 6,000 point army build for the Astra Militarum. So if you'd like to follow along, there's loads of videos already and I update it every week. If you'd like to add a Bane Blade to your collection, then I'll put some links below to Element Games and Wayland Games where you can pick them up for up to 20% off each and also get those accessory packs to go with them too for the extra sponsors. And you also support the channel by clicking those links as for every sale made, I get a small commission and that really helps me keep going with these daily videos. So thanks so much for that support. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope it gave you some nice ideas that you can use to build your Bane Blade. And so please hit the like button if you liked the video, subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible and if you're interested in joining the community it'd be awesome to see you there and I'll put a link for that in the description down below.